What's up guys, back with another educational video and this week we're talking about bacteria. But first, make sure you tap that like button, subscribe to the channel and share the video so we can stop the spread of BS. This week we're reviewing a really cool study now. It involves cancer treatment, the gut microbiome, and fiber intake. So this study was on 128 patients that were undergoing immune checkpoint blockade therapy for cancer, specifically melanoma, and looking at their survival, what they called PFS or progression-free survival, basically meaning how many people and how long did they survive with no progression of their tumors, the progression being tumor growth. And they were looking at things like the gut microbiota, supplementing with probiotics, prebiotic fiber intake, and how those things affected it. But they also had another arm where they did a little bit more invasive stuff with mice. Now, you might wonder how that's gonna play in, but it's pretty cool what they did. So first off, what is immune checkpoint blockade or ICB therapy? Basically, ICB therapy is a new form of cancer treatment that has found amazing success, to be quite honest. In fact, in some types of cancer, even two years after they give this treatment, they see remission rates of like up to 75% with no signs of the tumors. I wanna be very careful about like calling this like a cure for cancer or those sorts of things because it's probably not a cure, but it seems to be an extremely effective treatment. So what is it? They are drugs that help your body's own immune system target cancer. It's like tagging the cancer cells so your own immune system can go get them. One example of this is anti-PD-1 therapy. So many cancer cells have PD-1 receptors, which stands for programmed death. So basically what they're able to do is by having these receptors, they actually target your immune cells and kill them so that they cannot respond to the tumor. This ICB and anti-PD-1 treatments are able to inhibit that, which allows your body's own immune system to then attack the cancer cells and kill them. One of the things the researchers noted was that this effect might be modulated by the gut microbiome, that there may be some involvement of the gut microbiome here. And in the first phase of this experiment, they looked at the prevalence of certain species of bacteria on people who had longer progression-free survival in response to these treatments. And they found that a couple of species were expressed more than others. For the most part, it wasn't a big difference, but they did see some differences. We're gonna put the names of the bacteria up here because there's no freaking way I'm gonna be able to pronounce that. Just being real with y'all. As another part of this, in mice, what they did was they took fecal transplants from the people who had better progression-free survival, implanted them into mice, and then either supplemented those mice with a popular probiotic on the market or with placebo. They then took melanomas, implanted them on these mice, and challenged them with anti-PD-1 therapies. So basically what has happened is now these mice have melanomas, they're getting this therapy that the humans were also getting, and they're taking probiotics. Now what was really interesting is the mice getting the probiotic actually had lower rates of survival. I wanna be very clear, this is in mice who have been implanted with tumors. I don't want to overextend this data. We don't really know what it means. What it seems to suggest is that perhaps we need to be more careful before messing around with probiotics, at least in the context of cancer. So probiotics are taking strains of bacteria and then putting them into a host. Prebiotics is just basically fiber. It's just dietary fiber or specific fibers which are fuel for the gut microbiota. So what's the difference? Your natural gut microbiota tend to respond pretty robustly to fiber intake and it tends to increase more of the good bacteria. To be frank, if they're giving a popular probiotic, those are probably bacteria that are considered good. But again, we know so little about the gut microbiome we need to be careful before we start recommending probiotics to everybody. So the next part of the experiment is they sought to assess the effect of fiber intake on people who were getting ICB therapy. So they looked at uh, people who were getting more than 20 grams of fiber, people who were getting less than 20 grams of fiber, and they looked at the effect of each five gram increase increment of fiber intake. With higher fiber intake, 
they saw significantly better progression-free survival rates. In fact, for each five gram increase in fiber intake, they saw a 30% risk reduction in progression and death in response to melanoma in people getting ICB treatment. And this was even after adjusting for potential confounders like BMI and some other things. Then they took their subjects and put them into four different groups, insufficient fiber intake and no probiotic use, insufficient fiber intake and probiotic use, sufficient fiber intake, no probiotic use, and sufficient fiber intake and probiotic use. What they found was that the group that was getting sufficient fiber intake with no probiotic supplementation had the best PFS of all of those four categories, indicating again that perhaps one, fiber is a good thing, and two, maybe probiotics or specific probiotics, not the best thing, at least in the context of ICB treatment in cancer patients. I don't wanna make this just a blanket statement that probiotics are bad across the board. We can't make that claim based on this study. It's important to point out that the human arm of this is a cohort study. Now, cohort studies don't have an intervention. All they're doing is tracking people and looking at their characteristics and then putting them into different groups based on their characteristics. Now they can do statistical things to try to separate them, but you can't do a randomized control trial on something like this because for example, if the researchers believe that fiber intake is important for tumor survival and they categorize a group of people as, well, you're not gonna get sufficient fiber as part of our control arm, and those people have a higher death rate, there is no internal review board who is going to approve that study. It's just not going to happen. So the only way you can look at this in humans is through a cohort study, okay, where they're tracking people and then looking at their characteristics and attempting to figure out what makes sense. Now in animals, you can do this, which is why in the rodent arm of the study, they did a randomized control trial for probiotics, and then they did it for also dietary fiber. So they had mice either getting sufficient fiber intake or insufficient fiber intake who were implanted with melanomas and given anti-PD-1 treatment. What did they find? The mice getting sufficient fiber had significantly better responses to the anti-cancer therapy compared to the mice that were not getting sufficient fiber. And this effect appears to be dependent on the gut microbiota. So it's not just a direct fiber effect, it appears to be mediated by the gut microbiota because when they did the same thing with germ-free mice, which basically they have no gut microbiota, they did not see any effect of fiber intake. And this could be modulated through the short chain fatty acid production from dietary fiber by the gut microbiome. They did notice a significantly higher amount of propionate production, which is a short chain fatty acid, in the mice getting sufficient fiber. Now, whether or not this is anti-tumorigenic remains to be seen, but again, it is interesting. The takeaways are, it appears that in people being treated with ICB therapy, that high fiber may enhance the anti-tumor effects of these drugs, and that appears to be modulated through the gut microbiome. Really cool stuff. All that to say, fiber is cool. Don't listen to carnivores who tell you that fiber is bad for you. They're idiots, don't know what they're talking about, and may actually be getting people killed with their advice. If you guys wanna read the study for yourself, the links are in the description. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you like, these research study breakdowns. We are going to have a new research review launching on the BioLane site called REPS. Research explained in practical summaries where we take five studies every month that relate to nutrition and exercise and break them down in a way that's not only palatable for you to understand, but we also explain what it means for you and your own training in nutrition and what practical takeaways you can have from it. We also tell you, if we agree or disagree with the researchers' conclusions based on their own data and how it fits with the overall scientific literature. So if you're interested in that, make sure you check it out. Links are in the description. I'll catch you next week.